Welcome back, geology students. This is Professor Rude, and we are going to start video three on chapter nine, geologic time. We left off on the previous video discussing the different types of fossilization. Here, I want to introduce the conditions necessary to become fossilized in the first place. Two special conditions are important. You need to be buried rapidly so that critters don't eat you and you don't decay. And you need to possess hard parts like skeletons or shells. If we look at the image in the bottom, what the scientists are doing is extracting mammoth and other uh, Ice Age mammals from the La Brea tar pits. They have been pulling bones out of this tar pit since 1915. Here's an example of casts of the uh, organisms' bones. So the original bones aren't on display, but they've created ones just like it and put it back together so uh, visitors. Uh, tourists can look at the full skeleton of a woolly mammoth. The tar pit here is a natural oil seep on the continent, so organisms would walk by and simply fall in and be preserved. Let me ask you this question. Where do you think an organism will be buried more quickly? in the ocean or on the continent? Pause the video for a moment and think about it. Well, the answer is in the oceans. And the reason is that in the ocean, sediment constantly rains down so that when an organism dies, floats to the bottom of the ocean, it gets buried fairly quickly. As a result, overall, our fossil record is biased toward marine organisms. They simply are more likely to be preserved than organisms that die on land and are exposed to the elements. When you're driving down the road and you're looking at some rock layers outside of your window, car window, you will notice that eventually those rock layers disappear and then maybe further down the road, they reappear. There is a process we want to introduce here, or a term called correlation. And it's a process that involves matching of rocks of similar ages across a region. We don't always have a continuous layer of rocks across an area. And so we must go to other parts of a region to find those additional rocks. It allows us to have a more complete view of our geologic rock record. Let me show you an example of correlation across an area. Here we have Grand Canyon National Park. Here are the layers of rock that exist in the Grand Canyon. Here are the ages of the rock, Precambrian all the way up to just into the Triassic Age. And we all know from previous, previous videos that the Vishnu schist sits at the bottom. Then there are a whole bunch of uh, layers of sedimentary rocks. And then it stops here. Let's move to Zion National Park, Utah. Here's the canyon. Notice how it is not carved as deep. This is the Vishnu schist down here. This canyon has, the river has not cut this canyon as deep as the Grand Canyon. When you go to Zion and you start at the bottom of the rock layers, you start with this limestone and you end up at the Carmel formation at the top. What exists 
between the Grand Canyon and Zion National. They aren't continuous rock layers. They've been eroded away. So we can correlate and say that the Kaibab limestone here in Grand Canyon National Park also exists over here in Zion National Park. So this is a younger, shows younger sequence of rocks. Over here in the Grand Canyon, this has all been eroded away. So in order to get a more complete idea of what used to be here in the Grand Canyon, we can move over to Zion. Finally, let's go to this teeny tiny Bryce Canyon, also in Utah. And we start at the bottom of the canyon with the Navajo sandstone and work our way all the way up to recent times, the Wasatch Formation, which is Paleogene and Age. These two bottom units over here in Zion match with the Bryce Canyon units. And so by going from the Grand Canyon to Zion to Bryce, we now have a complete sequence of rock layers. We couldn't get that in just one spot. We had to go to various areas and correlate across the area. When we correlate rock layers, oftentimes we depend upon fossils. The principle of faunal succession introduced by William Smith says that fossils are arranged according to their age and that no fossil is ever found out of sequence anywhere on the globe. The term index fossil refers to a fossil that is widespread geographically, it's global, but lived for a short period of time. That makes a good index fossil. That is a meaningful fossil that when you find it in a rock layer, it can tell you very precisely about what the age of that rock layer is because the fossil only lived for a short period of time. We are also going to show in an example fossil assemblages being used to identify the age of a rock layer. These are microfossils under a scanning electron microscope. They make good index fossils. The reason that they make good index fossils is because they are widespread but existed very short period of time. They appear and then they become extinct fairly quickly. And when that happens, they leave their record and allow us to determine the ages of a rock layer that they are found in. In this example, we're going to look at a fossil assemblage in rock unit A here and B. And we're going to determine what the geologic range of a rock layer is. Here's the rule. The rule says the last organism to appear in the fossil record and the first one to go extinct will give you the geologic range of the organism. Let's look at this. Start with rock unit A. We have a we have a leaf who appeared in the fossil record here and went extinct here. We have our starfish whose range this entire range here we have a fern leaf, we have this skull, and a scallop. The age of rock unit A is then determined by finding the organism that was last to appear and then the organism that was first to go extinct. So of these five fossils, the last to appear would be this maple leaf. It doesn't show up until this time. Everything else is much earlier. The, la the first to become extinct is the skull. These are all still around. So then the last to appear, first to ex become extinct, this is your age where of the rock layer. It's the only time when all five organisms lived at the same time. Now I want you to look at this fossil assemblage and determine what the age range 
of the rock layer is using my rule up here. Pause the video and think for a moment. In rock unit B, we have the trilobite, the fossil fern once again, it's a horrible drawing, I'm sorry. We have the brachiopod, the starfish, and once again the scallop. So this one, two, three, four, and five. All right. Which was the last to appear of those five? Well, it looks like this fern leaf. Everything else came before. And then the first to become extinct was our little trilobite friend right here. So that leaves the age range, this blue area here. Now they haven't put actual years time on this scale, but the idea is that all of these fossils lived within this time range only. Well, that's a pretty messy video there. I'm going to end video three and continue on with our chapter nine, Geologic Time. See you then.